Got one last act. Welcome to the stage, Dean T. Byrne, everybody! <laughs> All right, Hot Water, how are we doing? <laughs> I've got a little bit of a good news to start off with. I have recently lost 15 pounds. <laughs> on a gym membership I'll never fucking use. You gotta make a bit of an effort to better yourself when you look like Kurt Cobain rose from the dead <laughs> and discovered Domino's Pizza. <laughs> uh, obviously, I was quite the same in high school, very unattractive, very uncool. So my parents said, you should probably go and try some of them uh, school clubs, try and make some friends. Then I found out that I was actually the most intimidating person in my school choir. No one ever wanted to fucking cross me in the school hallways. The urge to beat me up was fucking overwhelming. <laughs> Nothing I wasn't used to because I spent the first couple of years of my life in foster care. And foster parents, they always get a little bit of a bad rep in the media, don't they? They're always the evil stepmother or the serial killer stepfather. The worst thing my foster parents did was force us to play Monopoly every single fucking weekend. Imagine that, making a group of vulnerable foster kids compete for housing. <laughs> and sending them to jail if they make a mistake. <laughs> uh, but uh, I probably should have guessed that my real mum didn't like me when she decided to dress me up as a ghost for Halloween. <laughs> the feeling's mutual though, she's dead to me as well. And see, when I was younger, uh, I didn't really understand how the whole family thing worked when I was in foster care, right? I assumed that every new person who came to the door was like a new brother or sister. And if you think that sounds confusing to me, can you just imagine how that fucking postman felt? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't all bad, though. You know, there was a lot of older kids at the foster home. They always looked out for me. They let me hang out with them late at night, play a little bit of Grand Theft Auto. Not the video game. They were just nicking cars in the streets. <laughs> and then leaving them at the park along with me. But I embraced that. That was the only way I could ever have a wanted level. <laughs> but one day uh, when a lot of my new brothers and sisters left, uh, my foster mum came up to me and tried to cheer me up. And you think it'd be something normal, like uh, go taking me out for ice cream or going to visit my brother at the post office. But I, what I do not think... <laughs> I do not think that she was expecting me, a young little autistic boy, to turn around and say, well, if you really want to make me happy, you could just make me a new brother and sister. And if it's too hard for you, I'm happy to help. <laughs> I can remember exactly the first time I ever got told I was adopted, right? My dad sat me down when I was very young and he says, son, you're adopted. And I look up at him all wide-eyed and innocent like, uh, does that mean I can meet my real parents? He goes, we are your real parents. Now go get dressed. The new ones will be here in five minutes. <laughs> I don't think I'd ever want to meet my real parents again, though, because they're never going to be what you imagine them to be in your head. So to cope with that anxiety, I have convinced myself that I am the son of Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. <laughs> and I've Marty McFly'd myself back to this timeline in hopes of erasing my chances of being born. <laughs> but you also see a lot of things differently when you're autistic, right? Like, for example, whenever people are talking about vaccines, I'm always brought into the conversation. They'll say stuff to me like, we don't want to vaccinate our kids because we might give them autism. But if that's true, What's gonna happen when I take a vaccine? Is this gonna become my superhero origin story? Am I about to join those shite Marvel movies that they keep announcing? But that'd be quite a great superhero, I think. Autism boy. Leaps tall buildings in a single bound because he doesn't like being touched by strangers. Ah, uh, but uh, as you can probably guess, right, I grew up really nerdy as well. You know, as a wee kid, I always wanted to be Spider-Man. I'm not heroic, I just fucking hated my uncle. And you always see a lot of other things differently as well, like that show Love Island. Whenever that show's on and I criticize it, my friends are like, you just don't get it. You would never get on that show, you ugly bastard. 
And it's like, I'm autistic and I am queer. If I'm on Love Island, I'm gonna fucking win. <laughs> uh, but I had my own experience in showbiz when I auditioned for that show, Raven, for the CBBC. Anybody remember this show? I uh, basically like uh, this fantasy game show for kids. And I was gutted that I never managed to get on. But looking back now, I am quite happy that I didn't. Because a show on the BBC where children disappear after failing challenges <laughs> just sounds kind of sinister. Uh, that's been me. I'll leave you on that. Liverpool, you've been lovely. I've been Dean T. Byrne. <laughs> Dean T. Byrne, everyone.